Hey, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the Camper Report Show. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami. On today's show, we are going to be discussing a very interesting update to the North American Camping Report. And I get to talk to someone who's been camping since she was just eight weeks old. And I'll be talking to Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101, the number one consumer education company in our industry. All that and more on this week's The Camper Report Show. Stay with us. And welcome back to The Camper Report Show. My name is John DiPietro. I'm here with Bob Zagami, and we are looking at the North American Camping Report. And Bob, this just came across your desk. There is so much interesting information in it, isn't there? Yeah, you know, this is an annual report put out by KOA that they freely share with everybody in the industry uh, to give them a breakdown on the demographics and the buying habits and the uh, vacationing habits of people who like to go camping and RVing. And uh, it's, it's a tremendous resource for everybody. The amazing part about it is that uh, this is usually issued in March and it's based upon the previous year's um, you know, activity and forecast for this year. But this year it was kind of different. And you and I had the opportunity to speak with the author of this, Scott. And uh, tell us a little bit about why this year, unless you've been living under a rock somewhere, why this year's report is totally different and totally unexpected. Well, it, it's totally different, but you know, you gotta give kudos to KOA on the way that they handled it this year. They were ready to go to print on the regular report in the spring in, in March when everything broke loose with the pandemic. So they pulled the report and they had Scott Barr from Karen Consulting up in Maine who does who has done all the market research on these reports since they initiated it. They had him do an update based on the pandemic. What, what were the consumers saying now that the country is being shut down, they're working from home and, and the different factors. So they printed a special report in, I'm gonna say April or May, reflecting those changes. And then they went back to the drawing board just recently and had Scott do what we call an update report that shows the success of what happened in the campgrounds and the, the patterns of the campers this year and the projections into next year. And, and just as the boom in RV sales, the boom in campgrounds is equally amazing. Mm. Well, the amazing part about it is that, um, you know, the forecast in January and February when you and I came back from a national manufacturer uh, open house was that uh, units were supposed to taper off this year a little bit. And, yeah. um, you know, then March rolled around, this report was due. And, uh, you know, the term stop the presses really came into life then because they had to stop everything and kind of figure out what's going on. So as you said, they went back and, um, kind of did the whole report over again. And the most interesting part that I found in that report is that the new campers, and we're gonna talk about new campers and existing campers, but the new campers this year in 2020 were much younger than their previous uh, counterparts. They were, and they were in all categories of camping. They, they were in RVs, they were in tents, and they were in glamping cabins or luxury resorts at three or four hundred dollars a night. So, you know, th that's what was really amazing was that the Gen Xers and Gen Zs and millennials were a big part of it. And some of them are just getting into it for the first time uh, because of the mobility, because of social distancing. They can work in the campground. They can work elsewhere. So that was a big thing. But, you know, camping, camping nights are up almost 26 percent this year. And that's kind of losing a couple of months at the beginning of the season when everybody came into it uh, rather slowly and, and with intrepidation. But they actually, most campgrounds had a better year this year than the previous year. Yep. Well, which is amazing when you consider the fact that uh, depending upon where they were located, they lost, at least in the Northeast, the campgrounds lost two or three months of business in the front end because people were told to, uh, to stay at yep. home. You know, one of the interesting um, aspects that I saw about this report is that the millennials made up 55% of 
of the new campers. But more importantly, Bob, is that 82% of those people that camped for the first time had little kids with them. And that really is a difference from the traditional camper, which was almost the retiree. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, tr a growing trend. Uh, it was before the COVID crisis, but with homeschooling and the ability to you know, be together for an entire week or vacation, they're, they're going out, a lot of campgrounds reporting people coming, you know, their, their midweek business is up significantly and it's, it's families homeschooling. They're doing it in the campground. You know, the ability to communicate electronically over the internet, you don't have to be home. You don't even have to be in a classroom. Your classroom is mother nature. You're in a nice campground. So you do your three or four hours worth of homeschooling. And then you take the kids out for a hike and reinforce what you just did in the lesson plan. So the report reflects all of that. And it's very interesting. We'll, we'll put a link to the report for folks down there. Exactly. And you know, you, you brought up some very important point because for example, science class, if you're talking about botany and that type of thing, you can talk about it through a textbook or through a laptop. But when you can take the kids out into the actual forest, and show them the leaves, show them the trees, show them the sedentary, you know, the sedimentary rocks. Not sedentary, that's what people like. <laughs> okay, but yeah. show them actual mother nature uh, in real life. Uh, we, we did bump into a couple of families this summer that when March hit and they figured, you know, um, this is gonna be a while, they actually went out and bought motorhomes and put the kids in the back and hit the road and we, we ran into them in July and August and they had gone from San Diego all the way to uh, Lubeck, Maine from the West Coast to the East Coast and kids absolutely loved it. There, there are a lot of stories like that and, and again, uh, what I find amazing from a business standpoint is KOA, this is totally funded by KOA and yet they release it publicly to their competitors, to the RV manufacturers, uh, to those of us in the media. It's, it's a base plate to say, where is our industry and, and where are our customers? The campers, you know, people buy the RV to do something and a lot of them go to campgrounds. A lot of them, if they don't own an RV, they're gonna rent a cabin, they're gonna rent a, a glamping safari hut. So KOA gives us the demographic template of where these customers are coming from, the things that they like to do. So uh, again, kudos to KOA for putting out such an incredible in-depth report this year. In fact, two of them, two of them this year. Exactly. So the other, one other interesting aspect of that report that I found fascinating is that 59% of the people surveyed felt that camping was considered a safe way to travel, where only 7% felt that air travel was a safe way to travel. And that probably is responsible for so much of the growth of the rental market, not necessarily just renting RVs to go camping, but at campgrounds, like you had mentioned earlier, the glamping aspect of campgrounds seemed to be the uh, part that the new campers were most interested in. Could you, could you go into some of the options that people have camping in a campground without owning an RV? Oh, it's, it's amazing. A lot of campgrounds have rental cabins. They have rental RVs. They have rental park models. They have yurts, which is kind of a round uh, tent type thing. And they have all the way up to a, uh, a glamping safari tent. And, and there are some resorts, uh, KOA in fact has built one up here in Maine, uh, Terramore, which is only glamping tents, no, no RVs. So the, you get out into the outdoors and, and then these people get excited about it and then they go out and buy an RV. But the thing that's really interesting is, and we've said this on, on most of our shows, and here we are in October, we should, you know, consumers right now should be making their reservations for next year. We have a lot, I mean, when we say we have a lot of new RVs on the road next year, in 2021, the industry is projecting 517,000 new unit sales. That would be an all-time record. The last one was 504,000 in 2017. Yeah. 
and those people are going to go camping. So if, <laughs> if, if you're an RVer and you like campgrounds, you, you better spend some time this weekend picking the ones out that you want to go see because it is going to, there's no other nice way to say it. It is going to be very challenging in 2021 to get the campground reservations in the places that you want. You will be able to get reservations. There's plenty of campgrounds out there, plenty of alternatives, but you may not get the campground that you want. Yep. The other interesting aspect or a couple other interesting points before we move on to this um, is that hot private bathrooms were one of the key indicators of why people wanted to uh, wanted to camp. And also, people seem to be picking out more remote locations to do the social distancing, but both of them had to do with RV. Well, a lot of, a lot of them are boondocking. You know, with the solar power and the energy systems that we have, they don't necessarily have to go to a campground. They can go out there and, uh, you know, be in boondocking and get everything that they need to have taken care of. So that's a big part of it. And you're right. Uh, the, the whole aspect of doing camping anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Also, one, one, one final point. Um, the availability of technology, the availability of good internet seems to be an overriding issue with camping, whether people want to get away or, you know, many times they want to get away for the family, but one of the adults might still have to be working. So the uh, requirement of good internet and technology was still very important. Yep. All important. Yep. So we want to thank you so much for joining us on this edition. Bob, was there any other uh, industry news that we wanted to talk about in, in this particular segment? It seems to kind of be a slow week. Just, just, just real quick, and it, it's a teaser for what's to come, but uh, there was indications this week that Tesla is in discussions with a manufacturer who is not in the RV industry, who is looking at taking the Tesla electric semi truck, 18 wheel truck, but using that body to build a motorhome. And they've got rough sketches on it already. Uh, it would be an all electric motorhome. Uh, I don't think we'll see it for three or four or five years, but when you get a company like Tesla who isn't bashful about their plans and, and is aggressive once they do it because they found it, you know, their technology is battery operated in electric cars and, and what have you, but they, they have advanced it into a large truck and they plan to revolutionize the trucking industry. But the fact that there is a manufacturer out there, again, who is not in our industry, is talking to them about having a Tesla motorhome. So that's something to look forward to. It's certainly totally different when you get people that aren't from the industry coming into the industry because the way it's been for 50 years, it's always been Elkhart, Indiana centered. And now when people from totally different industries and people think Tesla is a car company, but it's really an energy company. Um, so that adds a total different twist to it and they are going to do things totally differently. So we want to, uh, I know that you're in the process of trying to reach the Tesla people to come on this very show to talk about that in the very yep, near future. In the future. Yep. In the future. Yep. So we want to thank you for this segment, and we've got much, much more coming up. So stay with us right here on the Camper Report Show. Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101, who 20 years ago had a little dream about uh, educating consumers a little bit better than what the industry has done. And here you are 20 years later and with an exciting new product. But give them a little flavor for what you created with RV Education 101. Well, 20 years ago, we started with VHS tapes to train people, <laughs> and that, that evolved into uh, <clears throat> DVD training. And then we saw on the horizon uh, that we needed to go to some type of online training platform. So in 2017 or 2018, we um, started. 2017. We started updating all of our training titles and started moving them from DVD to the online training platform. So currently, we have um, 12 
video online training courses and 12 ebook online training courses. People just, um, they go in and they enroll and then they, uh, all they have to do is put a password in and they have, have access to whatever course they purchase lifetime access as a matter of fact, and they can view it on their phone. They can view it on a tablet. They can view it on a PC. You know, what, yeah, what's interesting, categorize. go ahead, Don. I'm sorry, go ahead. Categorize into subject matter. So if there's a certain subject that they need to look at quickly, if they're at the campground and they need to find information quickly, we have it all broken down. Yeah, and, and what I find interesting with this particular product, because you're so consumer focused, it's almost as if they go into a university or a classroom, they get to sit with an expert at their own pace and learning the subject matter that they want. And I know you've got a great one on a walkthrough of a trailer or a motor home, because sometimes they may not get everything they need when they're picking it up at the dealership. You know, we're selling a lot of RVs, the dealers are pressed to get them delivered to the consumer. The consumer's excited. A lot of them are first time buyers. And then all of a sudden they get out there and it's like, what do I do now? Yep. So this and it's is all about repetition. You need to see things over and over. And then, um, you know, we have that access for them to, to get into easily at a low cost. Well, and the other great thing, because you've stayed ahead of the technology, like you say, Mark, you started with VHS. There's a lot, probably a lot of people watching here that don't know what a VHS tape is. You and I do because we're old guys, but some of these people may not recognize this stuff. But the yeah. fact that you're on a universal platform that they can view on any device, whether it's a computer in the RV or the tablet sitting out at the picnic table or on the smartphone while they're fishing down by the lake, it's always accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week, wherever they're camping or if they happen to be home. That's right. And the other thing that we do too, Bob, is let's say you own a travel trailer. So you don't, we, to make it easier on the consumer, um, we we built packages. We built um, bundle sets. That's our dog. We have a here. dog right here. <laughs> so so we have these bundled sets. So not only do you get the orientation training, but you'll get training on winterizing. You'll get training on preventive towing. maintenance, towing. So it encompasses complete RV ownership package at a really reasonable cost. We yeah. check. And, and, and you're right, you have additional checklists that they have. Give us an example of, of one that's really popular with your, your customers right now, because you are, after 20 years, you are the number one consumer education company in this industry today in providing a service to the consumer. So what is, what is the consumer showing you that they want? Well, at this point in time, we've been selling our towing and driving classes just like... Um, incredible people want to know how to tow it how to drive it if they have motorized if they have towable so right now that seems to be the popular subject with all the new rvers coming into the market right now typically what happens is they'll they'll they're a little bit intimidated about towing a 30-foot trailer or driving a 30-foot motorhome so they'll purchase the towing uh video course and then after they view that, they'll come back and they'll purchase like the orientation or the preventive maintenance. Uh, so it's a, that's kind of what led us to putting all this into bundled groups, make it easier on them to know exactly what they need if they own this type of RV. And I think the fact that you've been able to do it for 20 years and these customers, once they find you and once they have one of your products, um, I suspect many of them are return visitors. Like you say, if they go from a trailer to a motorhome, if yep. they become a little bit more technically oriented and want to see some of your technical stuff, they've, they've found the outlet that they need uh, to go and, and fix whatever they have or learn something new about the RV industry. And it's amazing because even if they buy it like today, we have found that the customers come back the next season and say if they're storing it, they'll come back as a refresher and they always have that, that information at their fingertips. And, and, you know, campers like to talk around the campfire. So yeah. I, I imagine you get a lot of referrals after somebody sits around a campfire and says, Hey, I just took this driving course. You ought to have it. Uh, talk to that a little bit. Uh, absolutely. Um, of course, what we try to do is we try to get this training in to like the first time buyer's hands. So we, we like to, to go through RV dealerships and try to get the training to their new customers. But 
with that said, word of mouth is by far our leading um, uh, way of, of getting out to the masses. Yeah, reaching the masses. So exactly what you said, our viewers love to talk to each other. This, you know, they're sitting around the fire and they say, hey, you know, I wanted to learn about preventive maintenance on my RV and I found this site where I can get, I got this online training and then the guy, next guy's like, well, what is it? Where is it at? Uh, we well, and we do have a lot of dealers that give our pro programs out um, to their customers for like with the walkthrough. And that is one of the best name recognitions for the dealership as the, you know, the consumer sitting by the campfire. They're like, oh, XY dealer gave me this course. Have you heard about it? Yeah. So, so sometimes in business, we get these ideas and we do things and, and we kind of hope that they stick. But what, what's interesting about this is you didn't know when you decided this online streaming, none of us knew the impact of COVID. We didn't oh. know the number of new buyers that are out there. Campgrounds are dealing with the same thing. They're getting people coming into the campground that don't understand campground etiquette. Yes. So, so you are perfectly positioned. And, and how much, has, not in terms of numbers, but what have you seen in terms of a COVID response to people gravitating to what you have to offer? Probably triple, triple what we've normally done in the past. Yeah, the pandemic is a is a tragedy, but um, because people don't want to fly on an airplane or they don't want to get on a cruise ship right now, the the RV sales are exploding, and and at least three times, if not more, three times the amount of, of traffic we would typically get in a given month has increased dramatically i mean it was our just... blogs are everything yeah yes. I, I hope it's not cutting into your time in your fifth wheel down at the beach in north carolina I mean, well, you know, don't, don't we're mobile so you can work from there too i guess absolutely <laughs> absolutely yeah. well, look at i, I want to thank you guys very much for uh jumping in here this morning for a quick little interview and, and letting us introduce our fans and viewers of the program of the camper report show if they don't know about RV Education 101, we're going to put the information down on the screen for them. And uh, thanks again. And thank we'll you. Can I also just up. add, be careful where you get your information from. Do your research and make sure all of the information is coming from a vetted source. So I would just like to add that. It's a good thanks. point, John. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, everybody. It's John DePietro, and welcome to this edition of Camper Report. And one of the cool things about camping is that you get to camp with your family. And we have a very special guest today. Her name is, you tell us your name. I'm Autumn Cole, hi. Autumn Cole, and she lives in Rhode Island. And I'm told that you have been camping since you were eight weeks old. Okay. I was told that they have, you have an older brother and you had your mom and dad and they had a a pop-up camper and um, your mother put one of the seats down and put your little <laughs> stroller in not stroller but little thing where you could sleep in mm -hmm. and you've been camping ever since right mm -hmm. okay what do you like about first of all do you like camping yeah i do like camping okay and what do you like best about camping what do i like best about camping it's just i get to meet a lot of people it's so funny because with my parents being state directors and all there's a lot of people that know my name and i don't even know them fam okay yeah <laughs> And it's just it's just the outdoors the outdoorsy side of it and stuff. Okay, and you're going into your your uh, freshman high school. Yes. So that would make you what? 15, 14? I'm 14. 14. Yes. Okay. So 14 years of camping. <laughs> um, highlights. Highlights. Outside of meeting me, of course, <laughs> and doing this video. And there's a camera right in there. You can look in the camera every once in a while. Say hi, everybody. Highlights of camping. I wouldn't really know. I think it was just been all the places that I've been, like Washington D.C. and been to Canada. Just okay. Because of good salmon stuff. Like Quebec and mm. uh, and DC. That you that when I talked to your dad last night, he said you probably wouldn't have gone otherwise unless there was the group to go with. Mm. And um, there's got to be some friends that you've met along the way that mm. you probably wouldn't have met if you weren't camping. Mm. Tell us about any of those people that you may be able to remember. Well, I remember when I first met Rhonda and Joe, I was scared of them. Was, Why? I don't know. They're just people I didn't even know. I remember just sitting in the corner at like this camping meeting and stuff. And I would meet all these state directors and stuff, and sometimes me and Jason, my brother, would pop up at meetings and just sit there, and it was just weird. 
and now every time they go camping it's easier when we go camping we have people there we have a whole group of people and yeah. Right. That's so nice. you really have um, you have your own family family, you know, mom and dad, brother and mm. grandparents. I mean, and, and you you do also have you've kind of done the three generation thing, right? With your grandparents, your parents and you. Special? Hmm? Special? Special. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of special. Yeah. yeah. So they because uh, your mom has been camping for her whole life as well. Mm. So what would you say to people that um, you know, have never experienced camping. What What is it? What's the cool part? I would say the cool part is just being in a situation with a bunch of people around you that you may not even know. Just, it's almost like a neighborhood being in a campground. There may not be people that you know there, but they also know what they're doing. And when you What do you to, mean by that? It's like, sometimes... It's almost like when you go for a walk in the morning. Say you're going for a walk in the morning at a campground. It's like going for a walk in the morning in your neighborhood and everyone's saying hello, good afternoon, or good night. Yeah. It's just different. They're friendly people. Mm. And, um, you know, your parents had mentioned that they could allow you and your brother to go out uh, on the campground, not necessarily with them knowing every place that you were, but with the other kids of the other mm. campers, you kind of felt secure mm. right uh, I'm sure that there are places that you've gone to where as soon as you got there you your friends were there and now how'd you meet Lindsay is she a camper too or is she just one of your no, friends from home I met her in third grade oh in third grade yeah so the cool thing now is you get to bring your friends with you yeah pretty cool mm. pretty cool um, as far as your parents being state directors with with the good Sam organization for many many years that allowed you to travel to um, a lot of other places throughout New England, right? Mm, it did. Any places in particular that um, are, were impressive to you? Mm, I would say Vermont. There's just something about Vermont that, like, I love the mountains in Vermont. And they also have some pretty good maple syrup there. Maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So that was cool. So do you have any duties when you're out here? I mean, do you have to... You know, when they're setting up or breaking down, is there any things that you have to do or you just kind of... Well, I do know that a lot of times, especially here at Normandy Farms, because it's the Fall Fest, I have to, sometimes they'll ask me to help, me help with the booths or just stay at the camper for a little bit because there's a dog inside and she's mean. And um, <laughs> mean, mean dog inside, <laughs> folks. Yeah. Just so if you see a cougar by Keystone, it's kind of brownish, don't go near it because her dog's in there. Yeah, me and Lindsay just had to bring a bucket down for Halo's Wish this morning, and yeah, it's basically just like helping them out with like the booths and everything. So, yeah. Okay, and I know that up in uh, at the Massachusetts ones, you've like scooped out ice cream oh, yeah. and yeah, and that type of thing with all the other kids. Mm. Uh, do you stay in touch with any of the kids that have grown up through this? Kind of, kind of. It's more of like when I see you, I know who you are. Okay. Mm. So what would you say to other kids who's, who haven't had the chance to experience the camping lifestyle that you've been able to experience? Mm. Uh, are they missing something? They are definitely missing something. Mm. I have a lot of friends who have never really been camping before, and their parents have never been camping before, and they're, like, so afraid of it, like, afraid that something's going to happen. I'm like, you know what? You just have to do it. I mean, this is not really uh, a rough place to be at Normandy no, Farms with, no. uh, what, three outdoor <laughs> pools, two indoor <laughs> pools. There's... Yeah. Uh, food stations yeah, and I, game rooms and I told Lindsay before we came here I said yeah this is a very cush campground a very like, cush. Yeah. Yeah, and Lindsay is, is nodding her head yes yeah. nodding her head so if you were in charge of marketing for camping across America what would you look right into that camera and tell people uh, who haven't been camping why they should be camping why should they be camping well camping's just it's a whole experience it's like traveling and you know the thing with going on a plane is it's not really enjoyable it gets a cramped thing but like when you go like traveling in cars you get to stop places you get to see landmarks and just the ride up there is an experience but when you actually get to the campground it's just so relaxing it's like a whole vacation it's not like one of those vacations where you need a vacation from your vacation <laughs> Say that last one again. It's, it's not, not one, <laughs> folks. Here's the new, here's the the new Go RVing spokesperson is right here. Her name is Autumn Cole, and you just came up with a brand new advertising slogan. Do do that again. You don't need a vacation from your vacation. You don't need a vacation 
from your vacation. <laughs> so with that being said, we want to thank you so much for being with us here on Camper Report. And I know that uh, there's a lot more activity going on this weekend. Uh, are you a campfire girl? I mean, do you like the campfires? Uh, do you yeah. like the pizza? Now, uh, talk about one more thing before we go. We're going to sign off, but your dad has a new toy. <laughs> Tell us about that new toy and how everyone benefits from it. Well, he has a pizza oven, and it's kind of nice because sometimes when we're camping, we don't really, a lot of times we'll, like, end up eating out or we'll, like, just cook on the stove in the camper. But it's really nice to have a pizza oven because it's outside and it's, it's a nice thing to talk about and talk with people around you, and it's just a whole thing. Has he entrusted you to uh, put no. the scoop in yet to take no. one out? That's I don't trust myself with that. It's a 900-degree oven. <laughs> I don't trust myself with that. So with the 900-degree oven as our closing topic, we want to thank Autumn Cole for being with us on the Camper Report. We'll see you again real soon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on the show this week. And if you like this show, hit that subscribe button down below. Down in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, there's a little button that says subscribe. And then when that is done, there's a little bell that pops up. Hit the bell so that every time we have a new show, you'll be the first to see it. And tell all your friends about it. <laughs>